All right, welcome back. All these pieces have dried up, so let's take a closer look at them before I decide what to do next. So first, I'll do this piece. This is the one where we had the base brown, and then I went over it with some red. Now, I, I like that red, um, but I'm gonna have to do highlights that kind of maybe mute the red, because it's a little, might be a little too red for my money. Um, this one was the one where I did red on top and uh, kind of a light orange on the bottom. And it's okay. I'm just gonna say it's okay. I don't think it's great. I don't think it's horrible. Then, this one, which is where we had that kind of a more golden orange kind of color. And I see a lot of cool variety in the paint here, but definitely gonna need some muted highlights. And now we get to the striations. So these are dry, but they're, they're too, they don't look natural, basically. They're too, I think the lines are too big, number one. Um, they just don't look natural. So before I do any other striations, what I'm gonna do is try to fix these. So I'm gonna put the big guys away for a minute. And what I'm gonna do is go over, um, these rocks with a wash. Now a wash is basically um, a really watered down overcoat. So it's not meant to wash away the paint, but it's kind of meant to maybe mute it. So I could try highlighting this, but it, these yellow things will still be there. So what I need to do is kind of make a wash with a more uh, muted kind of color. So what I think I'm gonna do this might be kind of crazy, but I think I'm going to go back to the nutmeg brown and I'll lighten it up with a little bit of the khaki and have it just be extremely watered down, okay? So here's my water cup for, for my brush. And what I kind of want to do is I'm going to use this cap. Oh, maybe I'm not. Rip. Um, what I'm going to kind of do is make the wash. So I'm gonna make a chunk of water, like a good cup of water size, but not full. And then um, I'm going to mix in this stuff. So I'm just gonna make the wash on this paper. I don't know if it's gonna work or not. So spilling out some water right here. Then I'm gonna mix in some of this here paint and some of that there paint. Blip, 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 blip. Okay, so now I have a really stupid level of watered down paint. I'm just gonna mix it in right on my, on my desktop here, my sloppy paper desktop. You know what, it's not watered down enough. This is just a big mess. Okay, so now I'm just going to soak that watery stuff up into my brush and I'm going to gently paint it across. Kind of a sandy wash. And because it's so watered down, it's not going to stick to everything. And I'm kind of shaking off the excess. Ugh. If I did this right, I'd have like a bowl or something, but I'm dumb. So I'm just going to leave that there. I'm going to do the same thing with this stupid amount of washed stuff and just let it drip right off back onto the, the wash palette. Okay. So I'm really, I don't want to paint this on because I don't want to rub away the other paint. I'm just kind of gently dabbing it on, right? That's the idea is just, just to let the water get on there. It's gonna just mute all these colors with a kind of an overcoat of light color and then shake it off. Do, 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 do. How's your day going today, people? You said I could come in. Sure. What you doing? Well, I'm painting. This is, uh, this is rocky. You're, you're a science person. What do you call when you're looking at like desert rocks, how you see the, the like lines in them? Aren't those striations? Yes. 
So I tried to paint striations. Problem is, is that they came out too vibrant and too realistic looking. So now I'm doing a wash, which is um, basically just to mute the colors. See those striations there? Now I don't have any striations on those, right. So that's the mess that I'm making here. And the idea with the wash is just to let it kind of dry. And then these striations that I painted on that were too vibrant maybe will be a little more muted. This is for terrain, for gaming terrain. So Dungeons and Dragons or any kind of things that you put on the table and then you have your minis and all that kind of fun stuff. Now, if you really want to go crazy, you know they should be at angles often because plate tectonics Oh, plate tectonics pushes them up. See, it's destiny. Yes. That might be even, you know, more challenging. And I, I used a real thin brush, but even this kind of, I felt like the lines were too, yeah, too big. Yeah, so I might need to. The same. They wouldn't all be the same thicknesses. Right, right. right. The lighter is often sandstone, so be, it would wear out even more. Yes. And that's what I've seen. Like, I looked on Google Images, and I, I was looking at, like, different striations. And I like the really light ones. That was, um, that's kind of what inspired me. What is made out of? Foam. So this is pink foam. So I... We carved the pink foam, and then we a hot a hot wire foam wire, cutter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that gave it the cool kind of textures. Now, see, I have different. This is all desert stuff, but in that bin there, I have Arctic stuff, and then I have regular rocky gray oh, terrain. Nice. See, so those are finished up painted those pieces. Nice. Yeah. So multiple layers of paint, and in this case, I hope this wash. See, it's already it's already settling out like the. Um, the wash doesn't get rid of, because it's so watered down, it doesn't get rid of everything, but it's going to kind of mute it, and then I'll overcoat it. Now, see, I did, I did some with this kind of more orange, golden orange highlight, and then I did some that were more kind of red. So I need to go over those and do dry brushing on those. But today I also have a sponge, and the sponge might be my friend too, um, because I can do, I can add some yellowish orange things to this to texturize it a little bit with the sponge. So we're going to experiment with that a little bit. I'm going to get this sponge nice and soaked. And some gold. There we go. And we're just going to dab that out, mix it up a little bit. Looks a little bit like mustard-ish. I don't know. And we'll see what that looks like. So. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just see if I can wipe that off. Yeah, that's not bad. No, that's not really working either. I don't know about top striations, but I'm gonna just kinda go along the edge here and brush it in. So we will just do this piece, then we're going to let it dry up and see how it looks because part of this whole process is as we learn, we learn from mistakes. We, we can fail but actually still succeed because anything in art can be fixed. If I don't like it, I could just paint right over it and do another layer and see how that comes out. So I'm just using this sponge. And you know, my gut instinct right now is I don't like this. I don't like it. So I might end up painting over it. But we, we don't know until it's dried up because the paint always takes on a different kind of tone when it's dried up. So I'm just kind of going around the top with that. It's a little bit more of that orange vibe. And that's fine because I could always blend it with highlights. So we're going to take a quick break and wait for this stuff to dry and see what the wash does before we move on to dry brushing and highlighting. So don't go away. Watch this excellent commercial and we'll be right back. Hey neighbors, The Handyman here with Initiative Coffee Company and I wanted to take some time to send you an invite to check out our Whole Bean Launch Roast Improved Initiative, available at our website, initiativecoffeeco.com. Are you struggling to act in the morning? Seems like your enemies are always beating you to the punch. Start your day with our Launch Medium Roast Improved Initiative at Initiative Coffee Company. In addition, we have a lot planned for the next few months, including our forthcoming blonde roast, Fulgurite. Straight from the glass shores itself, Fulgurite is so smooth, it's shocking. Okay, so a little bit of time has passed. These are still damp, but 
um, I consulted with a fellow teacher here who just happens to be a scientist, and he described a couple helpful tips to me. Uh, first of all, striations are not always level because plate tectonics. So what I've done here is, um, we'll go to this little camera, I've kind of drawn in some very light striations, and I decided to go with more of an orange, which I think worked really well. So I'm kind of going around this big guy now, and I started off with one line, and it's a little more curvy, as you may see. So now I'm going to kind of echo that, load up my thin brush there, and see, you know, this is a prime example of why I'm doing these videos, because we're learning together, and um, I don't know about everything related to plate tectonics or how striations work, but I like learning, and, um, and now I learned some science while I'm crafting, and maybe so did you. Or maybe you knew this all along and you're just staring at your screen going, oh my god, Bill, you're so dumb. Plate tectonics. Okay, so um, I don't want to be sloppy, so I'm taking my time here, but I'm trying to draw in some more striation lines here. And you may get sick of me using that word, but I like it, striations. Okay. And I'm thinking too, just as a learning thing, that maybe a thinner brush even would be better for this, but this is currently the only thin brush I have on hand because I was planning on painting terrain and not minis, so I don't have my mini really like zero point brushes with me. But there may be a better way to do this too, we'll see. So basically the idea is to, to just create some horizontal um, striation lines. They don't have to be perfect, but I figured it kind of adds a little something. And I'll do that on the bottom here as well. I don't want them to be perfectly parallel. I think part of what I did with those is make them too, they almost look like somebody painted them on, which is not what we want. I want them to look more natural, so just painting on some lines here. And they fade really fast, actually. Um, the foam and the layers of paint that I already have are soaking these up pretty fast, so that's probably good, because then they're not as vibrant looking. Okay, so, and you know what else I could do um, just off the top of my head is I could try some striations more with muted yellowish colors and um, see where that takes me. So, but um, I'm going to go around this side here so that you can, y'all can see. So, um, I'm going to kind of try to carry this line around. And um, kind of go up a little bit, go up a little bit with this curve, and then come curve it up a little bit here. And I'm liking how this is kind of breaking up the terrain as well, you know. So maybe it pops up a little bit and then it comes down. But not really abrupt, like up and down. I want it to be. A little more gradual here and there. Plate tectonics. Plate tectonics. See, things that you learned in high school might come back to you. You might have to know them. And then I'm going to kind of fade this guy's line down to the bottom on a little curve there. And then I want to do another striation here that comes up really close but doesn't quite touch. And I'm also, one of the things I'm doing is I'm just going in one direction. I'm not going back and forth because this isn't really dry brushing. I'm, I'm going in kind of one direction each time. But I like just the addition of this little curve is making a, a big difference in terms of how believable these um, striation lines are. And I'm going to fade that guy down as well.
Cool. Cool. Just have to finish this edge. Then I think what I'll do is um, I'll try a little, a little bit more of the um, of the striation lines, but I want to try like with a more muted color. So I'll I'll flip it back to that mustardy kind of gold. And I don't know, we'll see. I might have to do a wash over this, maybe not. Okay, so this guy, still a little damp, but not horribly damp. So the, the bogus wash definitely muted those colors, but they're still kind of vibrant. So what I'm gonna do, just on this one, maybe I'll do it on this little piece. I'm gonna go over my yellow lines with the orange while they're still damp. This might be a train wreck, but we'll see. Oh, I kind of like that. So far, so good, people. Uh, one of the nice things about crafting and painting is it requires patience. Now, I am not the most patient person in the world, believe it or not. Um, so for me, it's actually a good exercise. It forces me to slow down. Slow it down, Bill. Take your time, slow down. Get in the zone, you know, and then the other advantage of that, of slowing down and being in the present, it's kind of like yoga, that you, um, you kind of forget about all the other things for a little while. You know, kind of forget about all the other stresses or challenges in life, even if just for a minute. And that's kind of a nice thing, too. So I like how this orange is going over those yellow striations. Um, and <clears throat> my colleague Kevin also mentioned little more orange, but I'm also going to warm it up with some, uh, or rather yellow it up with a little bit of that. Um, my colleague Kevin mentioned that not only are striation lines not always even because of plate tectonics, but that, um, that there are different colors in these kind of rocks, partially from different materials and also from exposure. So that's kind of cool too. So I'm going to go over this one now. Let's see if we can Clean this up a little bit, just going over it. Yeah, look at that. Can you see that? I'm just going to go over it with some more of that orange. And I yellowed down this orange a little bit. So I like what this wash has done. And I'll tell you, people, usually I don't wash. I, I do a wash as a dark thing to bring back the shadows after I paint and stuff. And a lot of people do that. You'll You'll see people like um, Jeremy over at Black Magic Craft do that, or V over at the Crafting Muse. Um, and I oftentimes don't even do a wash if I don't need to, but I am digging how this wash is turning out. And uh, might have to just apply that on a go forward basis. So again, just using some of this muted orange slash um, slash yellow mix to go over the really vibrant yellow and to kind of uh, mess up my striation lines a little more. Yeah, I dig it. I'm digging it. Okay, last one on this guy. So again, I didn't do striation lines on all of these. And I have a decision to make as to whether I want to or not. And that will partially be, be determined just by how this little experiment goes. So if, for example, I like the end product after this dries, I could add striation lines. If I don't, then I'll finish out these other big pieces without them. And um, will that be, 
inconsistent? Will I worry about, well, these have striation lines and these don't? Um, I don't think so. I don't think I'll worry about that. Um, these guys are drying up pretty well, and these, they're very subtle striation lines, but they're more curvy. This one's definitely more curvy. So now it comes to this guy. Remember how we painted the top of this and there was like different variations? I like that. I like it a lot. Um, so this, this is the one that I chopped up. Remember I used my key? So there are some parts in here that didn't get painted. Um, so I'm gonna need to fill those in. And you know, as I'm doing this, I realize that I'm not gonna fill them in with a light color. I'm going to fill them in with brown. And at that, I'm going to use a damp, not soaking wet, but a damp sponge. And I'm going to use that edge of the damp sponge to, holy crap, that's really wet. That's, that's like a wash. I got to, I got to sponge that out, man. Okay, there we go. So let me get, let me get some cool air in there. And this is just gonna mean that it's gonna take longer to dry. I should have known, man, I should have known. Should have known that there'd be some pink foam poking through in this. And you know what? Um, it's kind of hard to get this in there. I'm, I'm gonna have to switch tools and go, go to my main man, the brush, and just stab in there. I do not want any of that there pink foam getting in. Muddle this up with some more variety and color. Just want to make sure I got it all filled in. So I'm doing a little bit of a wash in there. Very damp paint just to soak in there. Uh, yep, got some more there too. Darn it. Sometimes the messy stuff ends up looking the best, and I'm hoping that's what the case is gonna be here. Need a little more of my, my brown into this mix. So I'm just dabbing in the paint and then I'm going back over it to make sure it gets in there all the way with a little bit of a watered down brush. So I'm hoping that that'll cover up all of the pink foam that I may or may not be seeing. So it's kind of like making sure the paint's in there first and then watering it down a little bit. Yep, see I keep finding spots everywhere. Get in there. Paint it up. So this is, this guy is gonna be like the last one to finish because there's so much water in this paint, you know? It's just not gonna dry as well. So I gotta make sure, just looking on each angle here, because every time I kind of move it or turn it, I see another spot of pink foam. But you know what, that's cool. Patience, man, patience. There we go, there's another chunk right there. Whole bunch of chunks that I missed. That's the problem with pink foam sometimes. Um, especially because I did those rough cuts with uh, my key. That's why I'm finding all these little nooks and crannies. So part of what made this cool is also part of what makes it more challenging. But that's okay, man. That's okay. We're not gonna throw it out. We're just gonna let it dry a bit longer. So I'm just gonna wash over there, wash, wash, wash. Yep. Do, 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 do. All right, while we're crafting and talking about crafting, let's talk about music. And I don't mean music to play at your game table, because I'll have plenty of things to say about that in future videos, but 
I'm talking just what do you listen to when you're crafting? Because I've noticed that a lot of people have like different jams, like things that I wouldn't think of, you know? I mean, you could, of course, like people would be like, I listen to the Lord of the Rings soundtrack and that kind of stuff. Like that's a, that's a given maybe for some people, you know? You want to get in the mood for what you're making, so you listen to some stuff that has kind of your jams to it. But, but I could also see um, you know, people getting into other kinds of things, you know. So what do you listen to when you craft? Well, I guess it depends on the mood. Um, sometimes I'll put like a YouTube playlist on, you know, and I'll find like a channel that just does like one kind of genre and then I'll rock out to that, you know. And other times I'll, I'll be in the mood for something very specific, you know, and I'll be maybe a movie soundtrack sometimes. Um, Sometimes I get like that urge to just have the high power energy of like metal, you know, or um, some good old fashioned classic rock or stoner rock or jazz. I've crafted to jazz. So, all right, well, this piece is just a behemoth. There's a lot of paint that has to dry, so I'm, uh, I'm running out of clean table space. I'm gonna set it down right there. <clears throat> but I think, you know what, I think it's coming along. Layers upon layers of paint will make that happen. Um, I'm just gonna go over the top of this guy too a little bit, and this guy, and that guy, okay? So now we're back to this dude. I did some striations along there. I wanna get a little bit of a, a variety of color on here, so I'm gonna just, I'm literally just taking um, this kind of beige orange mix that I did, this wash color, and I'm just kind of stippling on that wash color to add a little more depth to the top. We're gonna let that dry. Sometimes I, I see people flick paint. I don't know, I don't know if I like that. All right, last piece here. So this is the dude that I had a lot of red on, and this red is very vibrant. I mean, you could see that on the on the camera compared to these other things. So it may be too vibrant. So what I need to do is wash this down, but I, I need to make a new wash because this is a mess. So um, what I'm gonna do is just uh, spill out a little water there again. And I'm gonna do a little bit of this King's Gold. Just a little bit of mustard in the mix and a little bit of this orange. We're just talking little bits, man, like just drops, you know? Mix it around. Maybe that's too yellowy orange, too bright. So let's mute it. Let's put a little khaki in there. The novice crafter in me would have been terrified to put this on anything. But now me doesn't care because I know that you really can't make a mistake. I'm going big with this, people. Going big. Go big or go home. I have faith in the system, in the process. I used to watch DM Scotty's videos and like the first couple minutes I'd be like, oh, this is gonna look like garbage. And then it would turn into this magnificent thing. And I'm like, I realized why, because he never stopped. He just kept going with it until it became what it needed to become. Like the sculptor who looks at a, a rock and says, um, I need this to be this, you know? And then they just look at it and then they keep carving away until it becomes the thing that they want it to be. So that's what I'm doing. I'm putting this mustard wash all over my pretty red rocks. Who knows what it'll look like, but I'm adding a lot of water. So I think it'll, I think it'll be okay. Basically painting on the wash and then going over the wash with water. So this is also going to be more drying time, which means we're going to have like seven parts to this whole video series, but whatever. It'll be worth it, dude. You know why? Because when I run that TSR um, Star Frontiers campaign that, I, that I've been keeping in my back pocket for years, people will be like, dude, this looks amazing. I'm just kidding. I don't have... I don't have a TSR campaign planned, but I did play that game back in the day. So you 
few people who might remember TSR. Um, I had a cool thing back in the day when we did play um, Star Frontiers. We really went all out with it, and um, we had a lot of good times there, a lot of good times. So I am just going to slather on some more of this, this sandy wash and hope for the best, people. Hoping for the best. It's like highlighting, but not highlighting because it's wet. I need more water. So it's just filling in the nooks and crannies with this yellowy wash, which sort of makes sense, I guess, if you're in a desert, right? Go with it. Just go with it, people. Believe in me. I think it's going to be dope. That's what I'm, I'm standing on my, on my mountain top here, my, my sand desert dune thing, and I think it's going to be dope. Just brushing this on, and I'm going to go over it with some more water. Yes, yes. Let it flow, let it flow. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's super damp. Super damp. I'm going to mess up my Zeppelin shirt. Damn it. All right. Well, <clears throat> guess what I can't do? Anything. Can't do anything until these dry. Got to let them dry a little more. Then we can go over, let me brush that in. I accidentally spilled little droplets. I think this one might be the dopest of all. I'm just gonna go with it, people. I'm, my guess is that this is gonna look fantastic. It's gonna look fantastic. I need to balance it on something though, because a lot of people are like, you, got, you should, hey Bill, you should get toothpicks and prop it up so it can dry. Guess what I don't have at the studio? toothpicks. So instead, I'm going to use paint bottles. There you go, people. Dun, 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 dun. All right, so drying time, I'm guessing a couple hours, which means the next time you see me, I'm going to be wearing a different shirt because it's a different day, but we will press on with our desert, rocky, sand dune terrain. We'll see what we got tomorrow when all this crap dries, and then we'll come back in there for the highlights, or maybe we'll have to do a darker wash. Who knows? The excitement is there. But stay tuned, because after the credits is my special bump at the end where I tell you to subscribe and turn on the notifications bell and keep watching more content and stay tuned for more seasons of D&D with high school students and other shows that we do. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Stick around, and we'll see you next time. Hey, hope you enjoyed that video. Make sure that you subscribe and don't forget to press the little bell icon so you get those notifications. And you know what? While you're at it, check out some of the other cool video content on the channel. I'm sure you'll have a blast.